Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first off, thanks for coming to my channel and uh, watching this video. If you would, it does me a great deal of good if you hit the like button before you leave. Uh, I'd also love to have you subscribe. So, um, today uh, I thought maybe we could do um, a coin bezel. Uh, I get some requests for people to show me how to do that. I think coins are sometimes good mementos that people bring back from places they visited. And you can't always find a pre-made bezel for those, or one that you like the way it looks. So um, it's pretty easy to make these and have the back open and everything so you can see the reverse of the coin as well. So I thought that's what I'd do today. Um, I'm also experimenting with some camera angles because uh, many people have said that they struggle to see uh, up close stuff that I'm doing. So we'll see how this works today. And uh, if it works out a little better, uh, let me know in the comments so that I can continue to do it this way. So, uh, with that being said, let's get going. Uh, I picked out a, an old British two shilling coin. I think they're called Florians as well. Um, for no particular reason, I just like the kind of pattern on it. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do this forward or this forward. Uh, it does have a classic coin look, so uh, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but to do it, we're going to need 3 16 inch bezel material, a uh, fine silver bezel strip. I will be using some 14 gauge square wire. Um, for the bail, I'll use a little bit of 26 gauge sheet, hard silver solder, and then uh, on the bail also I'll use a little bit of this 22 gauge round wire. So, to get started, we're going to uh, go ahead and make a bezel for the coin. The uh, <laughs> As a coin collector, one of the things that drives me crazy sometimes is how people treat their coins when they decide to wear them as jewelry. Uh, drilling holes in them, polishing them, doing all these things that devalue the coin. Uh, this is a way to do it without hurting the coin at all. Um, in fact, I set uh, ancient coins like this for people sometimes uh, that have a little bit more value than this. Uh, this one isn't a particularly valuable coin. but. Uh, so uh, one of the things that I do differently with this is I generally do most of the polishing before I put the coin in the setting. That way you don't have the run the risk of the polishing wheel hitting the coin and damaging it. Even micro scratches in coins can reduce the value of coins, so you got to be kind of careful with that. All right, so first off, we're going to make a bezel here, just the same way you normally do. Uh, we'll start off by filing the end flat. With a coin bezel, we're going to be um, we're going to be doing it open backed, so we're going to have to create a lip for the coin to sit on inside of there. And uh, you want your bezel to be relatively snug around the coin because you don't want a lot of play between the coin and the bezel. So make sure when you're measuring, you get it pretty pretty snug. Problem with this close-up uh, view you're going to have, you're going to see how badly I need a manicure.
shape this a little bit. Size-wise, I think we got it pretty good. I just need to do a little more shaping to get it nice looking. Okay, so the next step is going to be creating a platform for the coin to sit on down here. And you can do a number of different things. Um, if it's something small, like a real, like a penny or something, a lot of times I will use 18 gauge round wire and just uh, file it flat like I do for um, open back bezels for stones. Uh, sometimes for coins I like to use a little bit thicker wire. This time I think I'm going to use 14 gauge um, square wire to create the platform. And for me, I can get kind of a rough estimate of the size because I know to get one that's about the same size it'll have to be a little bit more than three times the diameter so there there so if I cut off a little bit about right there maybe it should be enough hopefully and then we gotta get this kind of lay flat the square wire whenever you try to bend it it has a tendency to do this twist thing so it helps me a lot if I use these pliers with the flat nose uh, situation going on here because it keeps it from twisting as much. So first off, let's get it in one dimension straight. And then the other dimension. And then I think I'm just going to kind of hold it. Hopefully, you can see this. I'm not used to having this camera angle. So um, I'm going to grab it like this. And I'm watching it while I'm bending this curve to make sure it's not doing the twist thing so much. And then I'm just going to keep narrowing that curve until I can fit that in there. It's still trying to twist a little bit even though I'm really trying to control it. It always does. See how I got it close and then I kind of can fit it in there and then I just need to Make sure it's touching all the way around the inside. So hopefully you can kind of see what I did. I got the curve pretty nice and then I got it to sit in there pretty well. This will allow me to make a mark. I think I'll, if I can find my little purple marker here. I'm going to cut it a little bit longer than I need so I can file it down until it fits in there perfectly. Because I'd rather have it a little bit too long and gradually remove bits um, than to have not enough and have a gap between those two ends. So we'll see if we can't get that to line up nice. I'm going to open these up and file the ends flat a little bit.
I think I'm pretty close. I got lucky on that one. I usually have to snip it out a little bit more, so. But I just got to get these lined up a little better. For soldering purposes, I kind of straightened out that spot a little bit so they line up a little better. Make sure they're pushing together tightly. And we can just flux that and solder that, and then I'll round it back out again. I wasn't heating this very evenly so solder jumped to one side of the gap so in order to get it to go across to the other side I heated it some more and used the pick to paint it across the gap a little bit once that was hot as well on the other side so happens now and again okay let's see let's clean this up a little bit If you want to, you could throw this on the ring mandrel to get it perfectly round. I've just kind of gotten used to doing it manually. Um, one of the things I'll need to do is make sure it's sitting flat now because it's gotten a little wobbly this way. you want to do before you solder it is make sure that it's laying flat. You want a wobbly surface for your coin to sit on. And then I'm going to cut myself quite a bit of solder here. We're going to solder it from below. Which I think is kind of a fun trick. I first realized you could do that. We gotta get that all nice and crusty with flux. I'm gonna put these guys find a relatively flat spot on the pad here. I'm gonna make sure the pieces are touching the bezel and the piece of square wire. Although, generally when you're soldering this, some of them will start to go and some of them won't be quite touching, so you may need to put a little downward pressure to make sure that they're in contact with the solder. So normally, um, if that's all you're going to do as far as making the bezel for the coin, that's where you would stop and start filing this flat. But I think I'm going to go ahead and put a, a piece of wire that goes around the outside of the bezel too, so that it gives it kind of a, a more silvery look from the, from the front, because this coin isn't particularly shiny anymore, but uh, I might want a shiny border around it to make it kind of stand out. So I think I'm going to do that. So let's find that square wire again another piece that's a little more than three times wide. Times as wide as the diameter. And there, there, there. I'm going to give a little extra to work with. So if pi is 3.14 instead of just 3. It would be more convenient if it was three. I'm going to look at it from the bottom here. 
got it pulled tight around it so it's kind of springing inwards, but I can see it's still got a little extra space right here, so I'm going to have to work on that a little bit more. So when I make this one, I want it to be tight, tight, really tight. So I'm going to actually make it a little too small to slide on there probably, and then I'll have to file it a bit to get it on there. If you don't get it nice and snug around there, it's going to have some amateurish looking gaps in between where the wire is in contact with the outside, and you, don't, you want a nice clean seam all the way around, otherwise people will talk. Nobody wants that. So one of the things that I run into periodically that would be useful is a mandrel that's smaller than a bracelet mandrel but bigger than a ring mandrel and so actually I'm making a video and I'll put a link to it up here when it's finished on uh, uh, making my own wooden mandrel for shaping bigger rings than will fit on your ring mandrel. That's been a need for me for years and I finally have a lathe so I can make my own tools sometimes out of hardwood. Uh, I bought a piece of uh, ironwood. Uh, so we'll see how that works. It'll be an interesting experiment. Well, I got really lucky that time and I got it pretty close to right on the nose. Um, it doesn't usually happen that well for me. Most times I have to file a little bit off the inside in order to force it on there. But I got pretty lucky this time. So we're just going to run with it. Uh, next we're going to solder this piece on the same way we did the inner piece. And hopefully that will go just as well. I try to get it nice and flat and make sure it's laying down flat. some more pieces of solder over here. One advantage to changing the angle here is less likely to have to look at the top of my head as much. Hopefully that's an improvement. just doing is once the solder started to flow I was making sure that it wicked its way all the way along this entire outer seam here because sometimes if you don't keep the heat on it long enough uh, you know there'll be a gap or two here and there where it didn't quite flow into so you know it draw it around with the heat doesn't look like much at this stage but it is a coin receptacle now where it fits pretty snugly in there. And uh, using this taller bezel and this wider wire, it looks like I'm not going to have to file too much off the top of this uh, bezel in order to get it to the correct height to, to just slightly get a grab on the top of the coin there. So um, but before we do that, we need to put a bale on here. So let's make a bale for it. This is 26 gauge sterling sheet. Make a little triangular bale here. If you want to see how to do these bales in a little more complete version, click there.
Made the little bail, now I'm going to make a little jump ring here. I'm going to put that through there. And then I'm going to have to bring these two ends together. And now I'm just going to pick solder right there. Now it's pickle time. Uh, after pickle time I'll be filing that flush and then I will use the Dremel to clean it up before we set the stone, or set the uh, coin I should say, and then I'll polish it up for you. Stay tuned. As you can see I did most of the polishing that I'm probably going to do on this thing uh, prior to putting the, the coin in. Uh, and that is, as I was saying earlier in the video, as a coin collector, it, it bothers me to see people polishing coins because it does puts little micro scratches in them. And so I usually try to do all the polishing I can before I set the coin, just so I don't damage the coin at all when, during a polishing process. So I'm going to try and get this guy. It's Queen Elizabeth, so I guess I should say Guy. Try and get that one to sit pretty much straight up and down. All right, and then pretty much you set it just like you would a stone. If you're using uh, the kind of tools where you have a bezel pusher and a rocker and that kind of stuff, you can do the same kind of thing you normally would do. Like I always do, I use the flat side of the needle nose pliers here to push it up against tight. Work my way around once or twice. tied up against there, then I'm going to start rolling that over the top edge there. Now this is where it's important that you filed it down to the right height because you don't want a huge amount of excess uh, bezel laying over the top because if you fold it in too much it's going to wrinkle and you're folding in over a flat surface here so it's going to be a little bit uh, harder to compress into that area. And so for coins, I usually do an initial uh, bending inwards like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my burnishing stage, but I'm going to do it at a kind of a steeper angle than normal. I'm going to use a lot of elbow grease here. So. I'm kind of doing this at an awkward angle right now. So. got a little bit of bumpiness on my bezel up on the top here but in general that's what I do uh, 
it should kind of actually lay it down pretty flat on there so your finger doesn't catch too much but if I push on that I don't think that's going to come out. All right uh, that was the coin bezel tutorial. Uh, I hope you found it useful and enjoyable. If you did make sure to hit the like button. Uh, feel free to share it with other people and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I love comments and suggestions, uh, particularly as far as the camera angle on this one today. Uh, let me know how it worked and uh, I'll make changes in the future based on your comments. So thanks for watching. Uh, happy silversmithing. Take care.